بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف uh, I am very grateful to Allah for being able to be with you in this, in this uh, very blessed day. Uh, I also congratulate you for the birth anniversary of Hadrat Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. And for the birth anniversary of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, which is tonight and tomorrow. And also birth anniversary of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which was yesterday. Of course, depending on horizons, there may be one day difference, but we are surrounded, alhamdulillah, with mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the lights of his true servants. Uh, inshallah, I will uh, share with you some reflections on happiness from Islamic perspective. And I hope, inshallah, Allah gives us tawfiq that in future we can have a series on this important topic. Because all our life is a matter of you know gaining and pursuing happiness. Потому что вся наша жизнь вращается вокруг того, чтобы искать счастье. And the happiest person in existence is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Uh, in order to not uh, get confused, Muslim philosophers use the term bahja for happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Чтобы не путаться, мусульманские философы используют термин бахча для счастья Аллаха. It's a very deep and comprehensive and holistic and intellectual joy. Это очень глубокое, всестороннее и Deep, 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 comprehensive, holistic, intellectual. So, the one who has the greatest bahja is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the inhabitants of heaven, we can mention as second example of those who have such deep, holistic, comprehensive, and intellectual bahja, of course, not equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Angels also have bahja. But what about 
human beings in this life, in this world, not inhabitants of heaven, but those who live in this world, can they have deep and comprehensive and holistic and intellectual happiness? Как же насчет людей и обитателей этого материального мира? Могут ли они обладать таким глубоким всесторонним счастьем? The answer is that yes, in this world also we can have very deep and continuing and, you know, intellectual happiness but not free from some kind of also pain. Ответ, да, мы можем обрести в этом мире глубокое, длительное и интеллектуальное счастье, но не без доли некоторой боли. Those who are true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continuously remember him, they have deep happiness all the time. They have tranquility nothing disturbs them and they have pleasure of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In uh, Ziyarat Aminullah we make this dua which is very beautiful Allahumma ja'al nafsi mutma'innatam biqadarik. Oh Allah, please make my soul tranquil, pleased, and satisfied with your decrees. In the Ziyarat Aminullah, we make this dua that Allah daru my soul um, sorry, the second part of the So, Tra tranquil, <laughs> pleased, and satisfied with your decrees, with your de decisions. So, people who reach high level of Iman, they have this tranquility and this peace in the heart. They have great sense of pleasure and achievement. You cannot be happy if you don't have ha uh, achievement or if you have achievement but you don't sense it. This is why I say they have great sense of achievement. What they experience, for example, even in one Salat, is not comparable to someone who has, in all his life, best food, best bed, best clothes, best house. Imagine if you, all your life, it is impossible, but imagine all your life you always have the best of dunya. How much pleasure you get. And the pleasure that a servant of Allah gets in one prayer, they are not comparable. 
получив удовольствие от одного намаза и сравнила с удовольствием человека, который всю жизнь э, жил в лучших условиях, самой лучшей едой, в лучшем доме, в лучшей одежде. То есть несравнимо с удовольствием человеком, у которого, э, который владел всю жизнь всем миром. И это удовольствие верующего от одного намаза. Because pleasure and pain have different types. And when a pleasure and pain is deeper, the lower one, even if it is intensified, cannot be similar to that. I will make an example. Одно на одном уровне, а другое на другом уровне. То, что находится на другом уровне, не может быть сильнее того, что на первом уровне. For example, if someone has always had shortage of food, okay, didn't enjoy... Допустим, допустим у кого-то все время был недостаток еды. Or didn't have delicious food. This is painful. This is a you know kind of suffering. But can we say because this has been going on for many years, the amount of pain accumulated is more than pain of a father or mother who loses his or her child? No. Because these are two different types. If you suffer from not having you know delicious food even for a long time the pain is never equal to pain of losing your child нет потому что это два разных типа боли и даже если ты долгую часть жизни ходился без без еды эту боль невозможно сравнить с болью родителя потерявшего ребенка if you have always enjoyed, you know, for example, having nice house. Would the pleasure be, the accumulated pleasure be equal to, for example, being given ability to meet Imam Zaman for five minutes? Would it be the yes, same? Sorry. Yes, yes. Может ли удовольствие от этого быть сравнимо с возможностью встретить один раз имама Заман? So, we have different types of pain and pleasure, number one. Так, во-первых, у нас есть разные типы боли и удовольствия. Each type can be a strong or weak can be, you know, be intensified or decreased, but they never be upgraded to the second type. They are just different. They re remain in different levels. The third point is that in human beings, these types of pleasures also may belong to different dimensions of our existence. So it's not that the same thing is necessarily getting different types of pleasure and pain. So if we look carefully, we can find that, for example, this type of pleasure and pain is for this aspect of us, this type of pleasure and pain is for another aspect of us. Людей, 
аспектов наше, нашего существования. То есть одна, одна, одно удовольствие или боль затрагивает один аспект, а другой — другой. Although in the end of the day, pleasure and pain are both experienced by soul, but soul has different dimensions, different levels. И несмотря на то, что в конце концов и воля, и удовольствие проживаются душой, но у души есть разные уровни измерений. Imagine human soul is like a multi-floor building. Представим, что человеческая душа — это многоэтажное здание. The lowest floor is what we share with you know other types of beings in this physical world and in particular we share a lot with other animals the second level is something between the physical or the animal side of us and the human or the intellectual side of us. And the second is something in between. For example, when I enjoy delicious food, my soul enjoys this, but now my soul is operating in the first floor. If I enjoy being respected by people, this is the second level. I am in the second floor. Когда я наслаждаюсь уважением окружающих ко мне, это второй этаж. If I enjoy being truthful, if I enjoy being knowledgeable, if I enjoy being kind, if I enjoy being close to Allah, I am in the third level, third floor. Когда я наслаждаюсь тем, что я правдив, добр или близок к Аллаху, это уже третий этаж. Most of uh, people's attention, or you can say greatest attention of you know, many people, is geared towards the first and second level. And therefore, if you want to encourage them to do something, or if you want to tell them not to do something, you refer to consequences of that thing in the first level or second level. Поэтому, если ты хочешь мотивировать их сделать что-то или чего-то не делать, то приходится отсылаться к последствиям, которые могут быть на первом и втором этаже. For example, if you want to encourage your child, a very young child, to a study, to go to school, or you want to discourage him doing something bad, you say, you know, for example, I buy for you this, you know, chocolate or, you know, this toy or, you know, things like this. So you mention something of the first floor or first level to encourage them or discourage them because that is what is their level of experience of pain and pleasure. Поэтому, если вы хотите мотивировать ребенка учиться или не делать чего-то плохого, то обычно мы предлагаем конфету или кружку, что-то, что относится к самому нижнему этажу. 
when you become a teenager, then you are sometimes uh, also trying the second floor. So here then love and entertainments like that, you know, become important. And when you are in middle age, and when you are in middle age, you you know explore all the first floor and second floor. And this is what Quran says: "Inna al hayat al dunya laibun wa lahun wa zinatun wa tafakhurun bainakum wa takathurun fil amwal wal aulad." So the summary of life of dunya, which is happening in two levels, is either lab, laugh, zina, tafakhurun bainakum, or takathurun fil amwal wal aulad, which means. Either is a matter of playing, or entertaining yourself, or beautifying yourself, or boasting, you know, that you know I have achieved this, I have this certificate, my house is like this, or I have more children, or better children, my children are you know more educated, things like this. So these are all different types of pleasure and pain that people think by. Uh, having success in their life, they can get. So what was the last part? Yeah, so they think this is the maximum they can gain, you know, from their life. But there are two points. One, in these two levels, you can never have complete happiness. In the sense that there are always problems. There are always sufferings. There are always losses. Quran says, "Lanabnuwannakum bishayin min al khawf wal jua wa naqsin min al amwal wal anfus wa thamarat." So you are looking for laib and lahb and zina and tafakhur and takathur, but the nature of this life is what you will be always afraid because. Either hunger is coming to your illness or loss in your fruits, in your children, in your lives. Either it's going to come and makes you worried, or it has already come. Either it's chauf or hosn, fear or grief. Вот проблема в том, что на этих двух уровнях человек не может никогда испытать полноценного счастья. В Коране говорится, что будьте испытаны либо so you can never have non-stopped uh, happiness and joy in these two levels. Поэтому на этих двух уровнях никогда не может полноценного удовольствия и счастья быть. There are things that you want, but you cannot have them. And there are things that you may have them, but you are afraid that you may lose them. One example is fear of death. Even if you have everything that you want, you are always suffering because you think that you have to leave. This is not going to be for, for, forever. The second problem which we have in these two levels is that 
unless we explore the third level, we would not feel that our life is meaningful, our life is satisfactory. Especially if you manage to gain what you want from the first level and second level, that's the time that it becomes very clear that your life is not meaningful. Третья проблема с таким отношением, если мы никогда не открываем для себя третий этаж, в том, что мы никогда не будем чувствовать удовлетворение и чувство какого-то значения в жизни. Особенно остро это ощущают те, кто уже получил все, что можно на первом и втором уровне, не понимают, что им чего-то не хватает, у них в жизни нет значения, смысла. You see, in uh, societies where people are able to meet their basic needs, physical needs, you see psychological problems emerge more. You see, rate of suicide is more. Divorce is higher. Children separating from families are higher. Why? Because now they find that money, job, car are not enough. And they want to gain what is enough in these relations and they don't give them answers. So they break these relations. They separate from each other. And then they make the situation even worse. В материально развитых обществах, когда у людей уже есть все, что нужно, больше психологических проблем, суицидов, разводов, разрыва отношений с детьми, с родителями. Потому что они уже все получили, и они продолжают искать смысл, и часто они ищут его именно в этих отношениях. Но проблема в том, что и в них они его не находят, и они начинают их разрывать, и все становится еще хуже. The highest level or the third floor of the building of soul is where we can experience human pleasure, nothing which is shareable with animals, truly human pleasure. Поэтому третий уровень нашей души это тот уровень, на котором мы можем испытать исключительно человеческое удовольствие, которое недоступно животным. We can experience intellectual pleasure. If you experience intellectual pleasure, then you get closer to the bahja, to the happiness that inhabitants of heaven have. And there is no end, no stop, no conflict in this level. If all people of dunya want to have this kind of happiness, they can have it. So, what is important for us is to try to be experiencing the third level and deal with the problems of the lower levels. Поэтому для нас важно попытаться открыть для себя третий уровень, но в то же время решать проблемы других уровней. If I enjoy being connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I enjoy having, for example, virtues, if I enjoy being, for example, a kind person, a merciful person, an honest person, a trustworthy person, if I enjoy looking at these beautiful flowers of humanity in myself, then even if I see outside 
there is nothing that much attractive, I will not suffer too much. Because there is something inside and there is deep connection with the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that keep me happy forever. Maybe my body becomes ill. Maybe I have fever, I have, you know, headache, I have, you know, uh, migraine. But this is only the surface. This is only first and second level that maybe I lose my job, maybe you know people don't you know appreciate me. This is first and second level. But I have so much to enjoy that that little pain is not making me deeply you know troubled. <laughs> This is why Allah says, Inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa yahzanun. The true servants of Allah, neither they fear means there is no need for them to fear, no, there is grief, even in dunya. It's not for, uh, for the hereafter only, it's even in dunya. Inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzan. Inna praytamu Allah говорит, что истинные, истинные служители не обременены ни горем, ни страхом. Это this is what Allah says. Also, Allah says that angels also say this to them. Those who said our Lord is God and remained persistent, steadfast, angels come down to them and say, don't fear, don't grieve, and receive the Bishara of the heaven which you have been promised. And because it says Absheru bil Jannah, so this must happen before going to Jannah. So even before going to Jannah, they can have this condition of having no fear and grief. <laughs> But if we have not experienced the highest level and we are still mostly dealing with physical life and its challenges, if we are dealing with the pleasures and pain of this first and second level, then our life would not be uh, consistently happy. One day is good, one day is bad. 
Иногда будет хорошо, иногда плохо. Yawmun lak wa yawmun alayk. One day is in your favor, one day can be against you. День за тебя, день против тебя. One day you are ill, one day you are healthy. Один день за здоров, другой ты болеешь. One day you are surrounded with the people that you love, one day you are alone. Один день ты окружен людьми, которых ты любишь, другой день ты один. تلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس. These days come and go between people. Sometimes you have power. Sometimes your enemy gets power. Эти дни приходят и уходят. Иногда у тебя есть власть, иногда власть принадлежит твоему врагу. So now, what should we do when we are still in the first and second level? Что же нам делать, если мы до сих пор чувствуем, что мы на первом и втором уровне? First, appreciate that there is something more. You know, imagine, imagine someone has a building and the first floor, second floor are very, you know, a small, very, you know, um, uh, uh, hot, for example, in summer or very cold in winter, no AC, no painting, nothing, no furniture. But there is another floor which has all the facilities, is comfortable, temperature is as you like in all seasons. Fridge is food, uh, full of food. You know, I have to mention, you know, again, <laughs> things of the first two levels. The way that Allah is talking you know, about heaven is also like this. <laughs> again, I have to say about furniture and, you know, AC. So, in the third level, everything that you want. So, please, remember that as soon as possible, you have to go and, you know, from there, run the building. Don't run the building from the first floor or second floor. <laughs> На первых двух этажах дома и не знаете о существовании третьего. И эти два этажа не, не, не обустроены, не оборудованы, без удобств, обшарпанные стены, то холодно, то жарко. Но вдруг вы открываете для себя, что есть третий этаж, на котором все в порядке, кондиционер, отопление, мебель, полный холодильник. Я упоминаю вещи, релевантные для первого и второго этажа на третий, потому что в раю тоже так. Есть и, и те радости, и другие. И тогда вы начинаете понимать, что этим домом следует управлять, живя с третьего этажа, на третьем этаже, а не на первом этаже. The second thing is that when you are faced with the problems, with the suffering and pain in the first level and second level, don't lose hope. Be sure that this is not going to be always the case. Anything in the first floor and second floor can stop. Even good things, you should not, you know, trust them and think that they are going to be forever. Good things can stop. Bad things can stop. So you should always be hopeful without being attached. Первый пункт был это оценить, что вообще есть третий этаж. Второй пункт это всегда иметь надежду, что все, что происходит на первом и втором этаже, оно всегда заканчивается. И понимать это, что и хорошее может, хорошего может не стать, и плохое не навсегда, и всегда есть третий этаж. So, if you are alone have hope that someone may come and visit you. If someone is visiting you, be aware that this may not remain forever. Therefore, or answers لكي لا تأسوا على ما فاتكم ولا تفرحوا بما آتاكم. Neither you should be feeling too much sorry when you lose something in the first and second level. 
nor you should be too much happy if you have been given something. In both scenarios, you should not be too much excited or too much despaired if you have or you don't have. Поэтому в Коране говорится, что не следует печалиться, если вы потеряли что-то, и не следует чрезмерно радоваться, если вы что-то приобрели. The third point is that in the first level and second level, although good things are not guaranteed to remain and bad things also are always coming, but again, they are not, you know, always there. The third thing is that the overall balance in the world is in favor of goodness. In favor of light, in favor of virtues, if you just know how to run and operate. Третье, о чем нужно помнить, несмотря на то, что есть проблемы на первом и втором этажах, которые приходят и уходят, следует иметь в виду, что общий баланс в мире настроен в сторону добра, света и благодетели. If there is something good, try to appreciate, to be grateful, so that you enjoy and it will increase. If there is something bad, Try to increase your patience and know that with any hardship there is ease. It's not that with every ease there has to be hardship, but with every hardship there is ease. And the whole system of the world and creation is made in the way that whenever you want to connect to the ultimate source of beauty and love, you can connect. Actually, he is there and waiting for you to call him. If we call him, he answers. But if we are muttaqi, it's not just he answers, he will be with you, he remains with you. Allah says in the Quran, Ud'uni astajib laku. Allah говорит в Коране, позови меня и я тебе отвечу. Call me, I will answer. Call me, yeah. But also Allah says, "In Allah, مع الذين تقوا والذين هم محسنون." When it comes to pious people who are benefactors who do ihsan, Allah doesn't say they call me and I answer. Allah says He is with them. Imagine if you are alone, you are ill, you have problems, you know, with uh, electricity, etc. at home, and then you have very good friend who is very kind, who is also a 
physician, who is also an engineer, who is also a very good cook, and you call him. He says, you know, call me, I come. But then he says, I can go and whenever you need me, I come back. Or you can change this house in the way that I stay with you. So if we change our heart, then Allah is going to be with us. And Allah ma'alladina taqaw. He is not just answering them, He is with them. Another thing, the fourth thing uh, that we need to remember is that although in this life, in this first level and second level, we have pain and pleasure, but if you learn, if you train yourself, you can get lots of pleasure from sources which are not normally utilized. Imagine during the day uh, you have put you know the curtains and electricity also is interrupted, you live in darkness. And someone says, why you are in darkness? You can uh, open the curtain, you can ignite a candle, you can use this uh, torch with the battery. There are many sources of light that you are not utilizing. Кто-то говорит вам, а почему ты не откроешь шторы или не зажжешь свечу или не воспользуешься фонарем, нариком, потому что есть очень много источников света, которыми ты не пользуешься. One of our problems is that unfortunately we don't see good things and good people who are around. Especially when we have a problem. When we don't have problem, we are like that. But when we have problem, even it becomes worse. For example, you have a problem in the morning, a family issue, whatever, illness, so you are sad and you are leaving home with this condition. And there is a great chance that Till end of the day, you are very sad and even you can create, you know, problem for yourself or other people. You can be angry, you can, you know, upset people because you have one problem. But 
if you say alhamdulillah i am at least healthy i can you know go work alhamdulillah i have you know good clothes alhamdulillah i have shoes alhamdulillah i have means for transportation alhamdulillah there is security alhamdulillah there is no covid alhamdulillah there is no you know earthquake i see every tree i enjoy i see every flower i enjoy alhamdulillah i have my family alive so alhamdulillah my memory is working my body is functioning so i can remind myself of good things i can look at good things and acknowledge them when you pass by you know trees by flowers you see the lake you see birds why you don't get energy from them why we don't train ourselves to charge our battery with all these beautiful things is it enough just because i have a problem so i dismiss all these things Но с другой стороны, мы можем сказать себе, что Альхамдулиля, я здоров, у меня есть силы, я работоспособен, у меня есть безопасность, у меня есть дом, вокруг нет ни эпидемии, ни землетрясения, все в порядке, мы можем пройти мимо каких-то красивых вещей, озера, парка, оценить их, насладиться ими. Maybe this is part of our defense system that when we are faced with a problem, our mind focuses on that problem so that that problem doesn't become a threat, doesn't you know destroy us as a as part of our defense and mechanism. This is very reasonable. Возможно, это часть нашего естественного защитного механизма концентрироваться на появившейся проблеме, чтобы эта угроза нас не разрушила. And this is in animals also by instincts. For example, if an animal sees that there is something that potentially the threat is approaching, doesn't enjoy eating or drinking. Такой же механизм инстинктивный есть и в животных. Если, например, животное видит, что приближается какая-то угроза, оно не будет наслаждаться в это время едой или питьем. But we should turn this instinctive uh, mechanism into an intelligent mechanism. Нам нужно превратить свои инстинктивные механизмы в осознанный механизм. If there is a problem that it's a threat and I can deal with it and stop it, I do it. But if it is something that it takes time or it is something that I have to be patient with it, it's not an immediate risk, then I should say to the defense mechanism, I should switch it off and say, I want to enjoy the rest of my life. So, so there are many things that happen in us like automatically but you have to train yourself and say I will take over and I do now things intelligently. Uh, I don't want to talk too much uh, so that we can have also some time for discussion. Just I want to share uh, one hadith. Do you translate this? Um, 
Look at this amazing hadith of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. Aslul aql al-qudra. The root, the foundation of intellect is power. Is ability. Is it like willpower or? No, a general. It says power. Qudra. Vathamaratuha asurur. And the fruit of Qudra is surur. The fruit of power is happiness. So if I do things in an intelligent and intellectual way, I release lots of power that make me then happy. And the second hadith, last hadith, is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ دَارًا يُقَالُ لَهَا دَارُ الْفَرَحِ According to this hadith which is mentioned in Kanzul Ummal, in heaven there is a house which is called, yes, which is called house of joy, house of happiness, yes. You know, heaven is all happiness but inside heaven there is a special house which is Darul Farah no one will enter that house unless in dunya has made orphans of believers happy so this is also yeah. We have many hadiths about making people happy, but there are people who like orphans, people who are alone, people who are, you know, abandoned. Making them happy is even greater. So, my conclusion is that if we want to be happy, it's possible. But if you want to buy or borrow happiness, it's not given by others to you. It's just made by yourself. People can help and should help, but in the end of the day, everyone has the key for his own or her own happiness. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Если у кого-то есть вопросы, напишите или, или включите микрофон и скажите. Uh, I, I, yes. 
Thank you very much for your attention and to Sister Anna for translation. Спасибо вам большое за внимание и за перевод. Shall I read the messages in the chat? Yes. In yes, Bismillah. Uh, Sister Kaya is saying, Mashallah, this lecture is just so beautiful. The explanation of happiness and its different levels clarifies a lot of what we experience in life. May Allah contribute to, to open his knowledge to the heart of our dear Sheikh Shamali. May we have the tawfiq of opening our hearts to truth and beauty of the relationship with Allah. Amen. It, would be really, it would be really great to get the transcript of the lecture. MashaAllah, there are so many gems to reflect upon and grow from. Uh, Sister Dion is saying this is such a wise and beautiful lecture. Thank oh. you, Sheikh Shamali. As someone wants to get the recording, and there is a message in Russian. Uh, thanks to Sheikh and the translator for the lecture. Yeah, Allah bless you, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we will have the recording. Uh, on YouTube, inshallah, soon. So, shall we? Uh, there's someone asking if there will be the next lecture in Russia. Inshallah, yes, inshallah. Maybe, inshallah, in the months of Ramadan, also, we can have, inshallah, another. Inshallah, Ramadan, it's the other lecture. Если еще побольше людей будет приходить, то тогда вообще будет много лекций. У нас проблема с посещаемостью. I'm just saying that maybe there are more people coming, yeah. there will be even more lectures. Inshallah. Yes, yes, it's possible to ask a question. Maybe you can unmute yourself and ask. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Nalkarim. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, Danawalakum, inshallah. Thank you so much. Really Alham. beautiful. Alhamdulillah. I have, a, you know, when I was listening to this lecture, I've been thinking about uh, people who, uh, you know, they enjoy and, and they really get a lot of joy and a lot of energy from the third level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, these, sometimes they're not necessarily people who are, mindful of God uh, or not even God conscious people how how do we understand that I mean these are people who they may have all the the riches of this world but these are not things they value but uh, they value maybe like you said they value truth and they fight for it uh, maybe they value you know relationships and helping people they value uh, nature, you know, and, and all these things. So how, what's your take on that? Yeah. Can I translate the question? Because I like it. Sure. Человек спрашивает, что есть люди, которые получают большое удовольствие от третьего уровня, но при этом это люди не с религиозным сознанием. У них нет какого-то сознания Бога или связи с Богом. Но они любят правду. Они получают удовольствие от того, чтобы сделать добро другим. Как это понять? Как это объяснить? So, one is that they have maybe techniques and art of utilizing sources of joy and energy in the first two levels. This is number one. Because even if you have this ability, even if someone is not good, but knows how to control his or her emotions and how to, you know, uh, charge himself, can have much better position in the first two levels than someone who just, you know, surrenders to the problems and, you know, runs, you know, by emotions. То есть они умеют управлять своими эмоциями и всем остальным. И поэтому уже лучше, чем людям, которые даже какими-то уровнями не могут управлять. 
The second point, which we discuss it uh, more in the science of akhlaq, is that every human virtue, if it is really developed, for example, if someone is really generous, okay, really, honestly generous, even if he is not a believer in God, but this human godly virtue gives him a room in the third floor. Второе, что мы обсуждаем в науке Ахляд, это если у человека развита любая благодетель в достаточной степени, то эта благодетель дает ему как бы комнату на третьем этаже. If someone is very kind and merciful, he gets a room in the third floor. Если, например, кто-то очень добр и сострадателен, то ему дается часть этого третьего этажа. But if you want to enjoy the third floor completely, then you have to be a true servant of Allah. Если вы хотите наслаждаться полностью всем третьим этажом, тогда вам нужно быть служителем Бога полностью. A true servant of Allah can go to the room of generosity because he is generous. He can go to the room of kindness because he is kind. He can go to the room of trustworthiness because he is trustworthy. So he enjoys the whole floor, the whole atmosphere. May Allah bless you. Thank you for the question. I think Brother, Brother Farouk was asking if uh, they could ask a question. Yes. So you can unmute yourself, Brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah. Thank, thank you so much for uh, the very, very beautiful lecture today. Yeah. I was just making comment that uh, I feel like we have to have more um, more of these sessions, and it was very, very beautiful. Uh -huh. I uh, for, for the time and the effort and the thought in, in, in helping explain this very complicated discussion in, uh -huh. such, a, in such a beautiful way. Alhamdulillah. It's a help of Allah. Um, Sheikh, now, so I have a question, and, and you had lots of psychological uh, ideas in today's discussion and, and really appreciated that uh -huh. when we were growing up we were taught to be right i know that my russian brothers and sisters may not be able to relate to my next comment but we we had gone to a christian community the focolare community and we see love there my question that i have is finding the in search of this happiness here and ultimately in the hereafter. Um, in, in, in search of this, how do we find the balance between being right and, and, and appreciating and experiencing Allah's love and mercy? Um, yeah, and experiencing Allah's love and mercy. So striking that balance. Uh, there are different ways to achieve this, but I believe if we have all the virtues, they automatically balance each other. So if you have uh, wisdom, if you have kindness, if you have truthfulness, if you have honesty, automatically they balance each other. Like for example, some theologians say that Allah has Rahma, but he has also Hikma, like a teacher who is kind, but doesn't give you know 20 to every student, <laughs> because he is kind, but also he's wise. He knows that if he gives 20 to everyone, then no one is going to study. So if you have wisdom and kindness and other qualities together, 
the result would be balanced. This is, this is one way. Or the second way, it's going a little bit deeper, and I say to be truthful. If you are truthful automatically, then you will come to all the virtues. There is no way to be truthful and not balanced, because truth is very measured. Yeah, it's not coming in bulk. Truth is very measured, so it's always coming with balance. The sister is asking me to translate, but the problem is I didn't understand the, the essence of the question. And so the question my, my, is... My actions couldn't relate to it. The, que <laughs> the question was uh, how we should find balance between being right or loving. So some people emphasize on being right, no, some people emphasize on, you know, loving people. I What's the balance? I guess I really can't relate because I don't see the, the conflict. Yeah, in the sense that, for example, uh, the focus, you know, is on loving or the focus on righteousness. And I said, you know, we should have all. And when we have all, they will automatically adjust each other. And the second was to bring the more underlying virtue, which is truthfulness, because I believe truthfulness is the most fundamental virtue. And then it leads to other virtues. And truthfulness is very measured. Truthfulness cannot come in bulk. Therefore, it's automatically coming with balance. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to just follow up with Sister Anna's question. What I have experienced in my life, um, you know, families, communities, is truth, truth is over love. So how truth manifests is through harshness. And 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 Jazakumullah for your your answer because it really balance is achieved through virtues and collective virtue with focusing in on truth. Yeah. Jazakumullah khair for yeah, love this, you. your, your answer and sister and uh, uh, translating it. Thank you very much, Jazakumullah khair. So maybe we can end. Yes, thank you very much for the session. My pleasure. Thank you very much for everyone for attending and. To you for translating. So maybe we end with Du'ai Faraj. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma kulli waliyaka al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi al-sa'at wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qaida wa nasira. ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طبيلا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ولوالدي والدينا ولمن وجب له حق علينا ولمن أوصانا بالدعاء اللهم اجعل أباغب أمورنا خيرا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين التماس دعا في أمان الله خلاص